We're going to begin with NBC News correspondent Marissa Parra, who is in Tampa. Marissa, good morning. Just walk us through it. What was it like at the height of the storm, and what are you seeing now that Milton has cleared out? Joe, a massive difference. If you were watching last night as that storm was really at its peak, I mean, there were times where those wind gusts were making it difficult to stand up right, and we weren't even in the thick of it because, as we've talked about, that debris posing such a danger to anyone that was in the middle of those winds, and that is a big reason why we saw first responders in several different counties suspending their emergency operations throughout the state along the Gulf Coast because it simply was not safe because we talked about that debris left over from Helene, which could pose as a a deadly lethal projectile. So we were sheltered. We even had two walls. Uh, we're talking about concrete walls flanking us on either side. And even then we could feel those wind gusts, the really, really heavy rain downpour, which we know was a one in 1,000 year rain event. And that is something, of course, uh, I got from our Bill Karens. But we were seeing that ourselves. We were seeing the water pooling on the ground all around us. Uh, my rain jacket is actually still wet from last night. It hasn't it had a chance to dry out. But as you can see right now, very calm. And this is when people are very tempted to go out into the streets to see the damage. And we caution everyone against that, Joe. There's a reason why counties and sheriff's offices are saying, please stay put, because what we are seeing from social videos posted, especially by those first responders, there are a lot of downed trees and most importantly, downed power lines, which is why millions are without power. But that poses a massive risk. You don't want to be driving over that. So please wait, stay put. First responders are still working to make sure those streets are clear before you go and scope about the damage. Exactly. Joe. And we just heard that message from the mayor, Jane Castor, who says residents should stay inside until city officials can go out and assess the damage, saying the region did suffer extensive damage, noting high tide also coming in right now. Marissa, let's talk about Bayshore Boulevard. This is a street that runs along the bay, a spot that's prone to flooding. You know it well. During Helene, the water came in pretty fast. How are things there now? Do we know? So, Joe, this is one of those things where it's a little difficult because I am not able to be there and show you myself. From all reports, though, that we've gotten, it doesn't look like it was the same type of event that we've had before, at least when I've been on with you. I know many times I have been there at Bayshore Boulevard showing you the flooding, which during Helene got quite high, especially some of those homes. We saw the water start to get into those homes creeping in. Um, but this time it actually looked like there was a different event. And I'm excited and eager to talk to our meteorologist to really understand the idea of the bay water being sucked out of the Tampa Bay. That is something I'm hearing from people on the ground, including the folks at Tampa Bay or Tampa General Hospital. This is the hospital right there in the center of Davis Islands, right there in the middle of Tampa that had the fortified walls, aqua fence, if you will. I asked them overnight, how did aqua fence hold up? They said, well, we didn't have a problem because the water actually had receded and then eventually came back out. So still trying to get a full sense of how high the water got once it did go back into the bay, Joe, but certainly nothing like what we've seen in some of the more recent hurricanes. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.